we're back. A little yeah, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to keep you all waiting. All four of you. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely grow that. Speaking of growing, if you guys like what you're hearing, you're seeing, definitely give us a follow. Um, our YouTube channel, we're going to be uploading everything like that too on YouTube. So give us a subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, show us your, your support. So, all right, node governments. All right. Node governments. Node governments are chosen from a node citizenry when a node reaches stage three. Position within a node's government are attained through titles that grant special access to NPCs in the node. So you have your mayor, your priests, your patron guild leader, and chief bounty hunter. There are a lot of things that you can strive for within a node that grant you that special treatment. So hold big positions in government. Right. That's pretty cool, chief so bounty hunter. I, I can see you being a bounty hunter. <laughs> Endless is definitely bounty hunter material. Right. So you have mayors. Mayors are leaders of a node's government who control the development of that node. They allocate resources, taxes, and quests to help develop node defenses. Coordinate the transfer of needed supplies with citizens operating caravans. Mayors must communicate what resources are necessary for a particular node, then motivate the citizens to fulfill those needs and other leadership powers. Only node citizens may be elected mayor. Only one citizenship may be de declared per account and per server. This may have changed to one citizenship per account. A king or queen can also become a mayor. You may only ever be a citizen of a single node at a time. Mayors gain new powers and responsibilities as their node advances. The mayoral title unlocks special abilities and stats during siege or events. Node elections. Once a node has reached village stage, there will be a one week cooldown period before node elections begin. This cooldown period allows players to establish citizenship of the village, which may require them to relinquish previous citizenship at another node. Following the initial cooldown, there will be a one week election process. Then from that point on, elections will follow a monthly cadence. Node sieges may not be declared for 21 days following a node advancing to village. This does not apply to nodes at higher stages. So Steven says, the village stage is a unique stage because that's when the government system comes online and all other stages past village there will have already been a cadence for the election system and it will follow that cadence. But after the initial village stage is completed, there will be a one week period where players have an opportunity to establish citizenship of the village that also provides for the cool down time that is. That would be present on players leveling another node to kind of participate in, in this particular node leveling up. But that after one week period, then there will be a one week election process. And then from that point moving forward, there'll be the one month cadence that the node experiences elections on. So expect flyers and phone calls <laughs> during that week. <laughs> Texts. Debates. Yeah. TV commercials. <laughs> yeah. And node elections occur on a monthly basis. Only citizens of a node may participate in the elections. Only node citizens may be elected mayor. Only one citizenship may be declared for account per server. King or queen can also become a mayor. Yeah, I wonder what the king and queen thing is. Yeah, That's I don't know. <gasps> I could be a queen? You're probably the no life this place, but yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm just a figurehead, but it gets prettier dresses. That's all I'm hoping for. Node governments and mayors are chosen through different methods according to the node's type. Divine node governments are, are chosen from citizens via service-oriented quests that prove faith and dedication to the node. Economic node governments are able to be bought and sold by citizens with the most money. This is stuff we already went through before. Yep. Yeah. Mayors of military nodes are chosen from citizens through last man standing. Gladiatorial stay arena style combat. That'd be pretty That's fun. That's cool. 
An idea currently under consideration is to have players build out a champion that they can then fight in the arena rather than using their regular characters. Oh, that's smart. These champions can be equipped with gear and skills via quests along with materials and gold to make the champion stronger. Ah. The reason for the champion idea is because the game isn't balanced for one versus one PvP. Utilizing champions makes arena combat more of a level playing ground. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Arena... Yeah, like, just have a character that is going to be your gladiator. Arena-style combat... Fun, is... hmm? So the other way is pretty fun, too, though. Yeah. I don't know, I like it better this way, because I'm not good with PvP. Yeah. Arena-style combat is instant, but spectators may be possible through an interface. Scientific node governments are elected democratically. So mayoral quests. Mayors are able to initiate quest-driven systems that non-citizens can participate in. The mayor can use a portion of their node's treasury or goods as rewards for quest completion. Players will be able to interface with the node to view the quests that are available to them. These quests can be used to bring in material components to help combat node atrophy. Leadership powers. Government officials have wide-ranging leadership powers. Some of which are, they mark foreign citizens of other nodes as enemies of the state, declare war on another node and rally citizens to the cause, enter into trade agreements, directing assets, building projects, um, tax allocation, mayors able to allocate treasury funding to hire mercenary NPCs to defend their node during sieges. Mayors are able to initiate quest-driven systems that non-citizens can participate in. The mayor can use a portion of the node's treasury or goods as rewards for quest completion. Players will be able to interface with the node to view the quests that are available to them. These quests can be used to bring in material components to help combat node atrophy. Governments may be able to choose a node name from a predetermined list. The government has a lot to say in the direction of the node's development, directing assets building projects, tax allocation, defensibility, etc. Players have the ability to not only create these cities, but they have the right of self-governance. There are levers and dials that are present to both the owners of castles as well as the elected officials of nodes, uh, okay, of nodes that during their administration, they have the ability to impact and influence the region around them. Okay, so the castles, Remember the 15 castles? Yep. They have the king and queens. Ah, uh, okay. That's where the king's queens would come from. And I think those can be controlled by guilds. Guilds do not control nodes. Guild leaders, kings and queens, can become mayors of nodes. Guilds hold separate roles in the direction of the node than the roles held by private citizens. Only a certain number of guilds may participate in these roles. Separate guild roles are reserved for small, medium, and large guilds. Guilds also hold separate roles in the direction of the node than the roles held by the private citizens, and only a certain number of guilds may participate in these roles. Separate guild roles are reserved for small size guilds, medium size guilds, and large size guilds. Yeah. I'm proud. I mean, then I guess no taxes, practically. We get that right. You need taxes to yeah. build stuff. Um, yeah. Node Wars, if you've ever played BDO, Black Desert Online, then Node Wars are just going to be, you're going to declare war on another node. Um, like if that In node is... a much is, grander scale, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's say if you're, if you have a node that's a village and you're a village and they're hindering you, and literally it's a race, you're probably going to say, we have to go to war with that vi that other village to stop them so we can move on to, to be in a town. So, yeah, node wars, definitely going to be interesting to see. And alliances, of course, alliances are normal. Um, I'm pretty sure alliances are going to come down to, especially like economic nodes, you know, you can be like, hey, we'll make an alliance with you. You're another economic node. 
so then you can build markets within each other's places probably. Um, so just go to caravans. I know this is going to be one of the bigger aspects of of the game. Um, the caravan system is in an open world PvP system that revolves around opportunity and risk. <laughs> Just like every medieval thing you've ever seen or film or movie. Yep. Caravans facilitate the transfer of goods for players wishing to turn a profit. Caravans are for transfer of personal goods and quests as well as supplies for castles and nodes. Caravans may only be sent from or arrive at village nodes or above. Caravans can transport goods for more than one player. The PvP flagging system does not apply to caravans. Caravan types. Mayoral, quest-driven caravans, and personal caravans. Caravan system is another very big part of the node system. They are the main driver of economic activity and there is a bunch of different types of caravans. Caravan PvP. Oh boy. Caravans create an open PvP zone that flags players for combat. Players will be able to state their intentions to attack, defend, or ignore via a user interface window. Ooh. <laughs> the proximity that the UI window appears is determined by the player's performance as either a defender or an attacker in previous raids. A group will be required to successfully attack a caravan. A caravan will persist in the world for a period of five to 10 minutes from the time its owner logs out or is disconnected from the server. It's still intended from a design standpoint to be a window that is presented to the player based on proximity. And that proximity, it can be greater depending on your performance as either a defender or an attacker in previous raids. Caravan destruction. If a caravan is destroyed, becomes a wreckage, it will drop a portion of the goods it was transporting. Caravan components may also drop when a caravan is destroyed. These components may be salvageable by the caravan owner or by other players, in the case of high-grade components. Caravans drop certificates for heavy goods that are redeemable at the origin node for a portion of the goods. Okay. Yeah. The caravan becomes a wreckage upon destruction and that wreckage is an interfaceable item that players can come up to and they can receive certificates for a portion of the goods inside the caravan. Now the idea with that certificate is that it must be taken back to the point of origin or at least a region within that point of origin. We'll see about that last part because of a few things I want to test in the alpha from a game ability standpoint. The reason why for this is because what might happen is you may have some type of collaboration within a guild to kind of game that system. Hey, I'm going to reach this caravan just to the border of the region and then we're all, and then we'll all destroy it, collect the goods and take it to you to know that region's warehouse and to have to skip out on the last half of the way. So it must successfully reach its destination before the goods can be considered part of that region. Hmm. Ah, okay. So it's kind of like they found a little flaw in that system. Underrealm nodes. Oh yeah, this is this is the cool one. <laughs> Underrealm nodes and nodes directly above them are related, but do not exist in the same ZOI. Caravan routes will go underground. Node sieges occur in the usual manner, and there will be Underrealm metropolises. Coastal island nodes. There will be nodes along the coast and on islands. These nodes will have specific water-oriented influences and abilities, services, quest lines that relate to the seas. Coastal, node changes, coastal nodes change the spawn tables of the nearby water content and can also trigger speci specific events. Harbors and coastal nodes will have quest lines that relate to the ocean and nearby islands. It may be possible to siege a coastal city by sea. That would be cool. Island, yeah. That's where the ships will come in. Yep. Underwater nodes or underwater points of interest that have NPC structures may appear to be like cities, but they will not be nodes. There won't be nodes underwater or in the water. 
Patron guilds. Whether an organization is the patron of their node means it contributes the most amount of work to the node from its members. Patron guilds unlock the following benefits for their members. Emblems can be applied to guild armor that can be purchased from the node. Participation in the node stock market. Ability to participate in specific guild-based missions that will progress the guild's leveling and development. Allocation of guild points to unlock specific node abilities for guild members. Ability to claim an in-node guild hall. These have different perks and benefits to halls placed on freehold plots. Any number of guilds can be in a node, but the number of patron guilds within a node is limited by node stage. Villages and lower do not have patron guilds. Towns can have up to one, cities can have up to two, and metropolises can have up to three. Okay. Well, then I guess this kind of answers our question then that, you know, technically, like, you might have a few people that are like... Um, like with the houses, you know, to actually become a citizen, um, you know, so your guild can actually utilize the auction house. We, you need one of your, per, you know, like to say it's like the treasurer. So we need to make sure the treasurer gets a house so then they could use the market, right? So, but the guild itself would try to become like a patron of that of that node. So, so I think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, relics. Relics are achievements for a node that unlock over time. They allow node citizens to craft certain legendary items and progress in certain legendary quest lines. No, we looked at that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the reliquary and can be stolen. Yep. <laughs> rogues, man. Rogues are going to do that. Yeah. Share markets. As nodes develop, player governments may open up a stock exchange. <laughs> Also called stock markets and share markets, where players can buy and sell buy and sell shares in nodes, Shell. guilds, and social organizations. <laughs> the value of stocks is influenced by world events and the performance of nodes, social organizations, or guilds. Hard metrics such as quest lines, nearby resources, citizen progression, and purchases of local real estate will determine the valuable of uh, the value of purchasable shares. Sieges will halt trading of shares in a node. This opens up potential for economic sabotage. <laughs> there is no regulatory commission to restrict the purchase and sale of stock. Oh, no? Really? Like, real life. <laughs> and to end it, we have internal conflict. There won't be a civil war mechanic within nodes, but there will be scope for internal political conflicts, such as undermining the current leadership and disrupting trade. The only way to remove an elected mayor prior to the end of their term is by destroying the node. <laughs> we want consequences to matter, and if that person got elected, then you need to work within the means of the mechanics to get them unelected. I like that. Yeah. This will quickly go like through. Said, uh, espionage. <laughs> right. So quickly, I guess we'll go through these pictures right here, just so you can kind of see. So I think this was a, a town. So these are pretty cool. This is in, in the metropolis here. I don't know, these are all pre-alpha too, so this is definitely going to get uh, cleaner as we go, but the lighting and all that stuff look really good. I like the, the water, and it looks like a really cool place to go explore. I think there's going to be so many cool places to explore. Bailey Buns Bakery. <laughs> oh, I want to have a bake shop, Bedouin's Muffins. There you go. It's one of the relics, so you could steal that relic. It's a protection relic. Looks like a siege, maybe, here? No. There's your node, zone of influence. Escalation. I did see this right here from earlier. I did put the, pull this up, but... So, I don't know if you can see this, Missy, but it's like... 
So have your yep. current mayor, what the actual cult, you know, your culture, how many citizens, your tax rate, I guess your progress here. So, yeah, economic health. So yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely going to be a game within a game within a game. Uh, with a lot of intrigue and stuff going on. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. Well, guys, I hope you uh, liked our, um, our, uh, our deep dive into nodes. Um, it was a lot. <laughs> it was definitely a lot. It's a lot like, to process. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I think... Um, there's a lots of nodes, there's a, and it's something going to be. It's definitely going to have a learning curve to it for everybody, um, but that's a good thing. Um, so we'll definitely, uh, you know, continue our deep dives. Um, probably next time we'll we'll look at uh, combat gear, maybe the maybe the races. So, um, but yeah, so there's going to be lot lots to looking at, uh, but nodes to be honest i think is uh it's going to be an aspect that makes ashes creation not static and i think civilizations will will grow and they will fall um and hopefully but like i said uh the pro is that it's amazing and the world will be sporadic and it'll change but I think a con is, and I and I and I could tell from this, you know the way that they've positioned some of the the um, mechanics of the game and the structure of how things will work is, um, but the con of people quitting the game because you know people are going to get into this right, but they will probably tire. After a while, unless there's new content, but still, like you're always going to get a wave of people, and then a lot of them are going to filter out because they want to just try something new. You but know. the thing is, is that you create the new content. So if you're not playing, you're not going to get new content. Well, you a, create the new content. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, that, that's like the the pro is that it's it's going to make you want to play and stay logged in and all this other stuff and you know continuing. But I'm just saying, if the con though is, um, you know, it's it's gonna I think it's gonna go up and down, you know, like. If there's a metropolis, like how how much is it like how active does things need to be to maintain that metropolis? You know, like you know, hopefully the players will create the content and they won't have to artificially do things. Um, you know, because that's like what like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy does is they do a lot, a lot of our artificial things. Um, but I mean, with anything, right? You know, with with fates, everyone was all about them. When storm uh, with the with the new type of fates and the stones, all stuff with uh, uh, Shadowbringers. Um, and the same thing that's going to happen with Torghast is you're going to do it, but after a month, are you going to are you going to really want to do Torghast? You know. So I guess it just the game has to launch and have to see, and I and hopefully they will adjust accordingly. Um. So. Uh, I just think uh, we'll just we'll just kind of have to see because I think if the players are going to drive and the systems are built upon what the players are doing, the people that are playing will be busy. But if there's not enough people to push up to Metropolis, you know, then then you'll never see a Metropolis unless there's more people playing. So, long story short, we want Ashes of Creation to be really populated so things actually happen. <laughs> and we can get up to those uh, yeah. places <laughs> and maintain them. So, but I think that'll, that comes with new content, what they're doing, how they're refreshing it. 
um, and people love this game and it's I mean it's definitely looking like it is made to keep you in front of the computer and on the game <laughs> so because anything oh, can happen yes <laughs> so but uh, did you I guess if miss if you want to close out with closing thoughts and uh, just close us out then we'll uh, um, closing thoughts um... I actually love the way this is set up. It's, I think, meant to bring people back into the game to interact with one another. Um, one of my main concerns with it, though, is kind of like what you are saying. Um, it's a lot of time people are going to have to invest. And will and they maintain. be willing to invest that kind of time again? Yeah. People have gotten so used to MMOs that, you know, um, expansion drops and in two weeks you're done. Yep. And you go play another game. People are used to um, quick gratification and move on out to something else. Or... Uh, this is going to have to have a lot of really good things in it to keep people in here. Um and I just worry about the amount of time that needs to be spent. That's all. Well, and how add, much continuous time. Well, to add on to that, if you put all that time into it, you build a metropolis. And, I mean, they say they're going to be a B-I-C-T-H to take down. But if you destroy it, all that time and effort goes away. Um, not saying that's a and bad thing at all. And then somebody flip a table? And leave the game. Yeah. You know, how many people are so, like, we just lost all that? Like, it's going to be just like you lost an actual city because your time was and effort was put into this thing. It's going to be different, which is it's good, and, I, and I'm hopeful that it'll work out. But, man, when a metropolis falls and you're on the wrong end of that thing... Let's go get ugly. <laughs> I mean... You know how people are. They will probably quit the game for a couple months. If you're like, it just took us a half a year to get this thing going. And then you lost it. Within, a, you know, within 24 hours. Yeah. So, yeah. six months of work. That is a work. Lost it in 24 hours. It's like, or two hours. Up in ashes. Or, excuse me, you get two <laughs> hours, right? So... Six months of work, lost in two hours. How bad would that feel? And I'm going to shut up. So, Missy, close us out. <laughs> well, again, thanks everyone for watching um, here at, you know, Crucible Gaming Network. And again, I'm Madowin, a.k.a. Missy, and that's Endless, a.k.a. Brad. And like you said earlier, if you like what we're doing, please follow us. Um subscribe want to keep us going join our discord <laughs> we want to keep going for you guys join our discord <laughs> get more bodies in there where our discord's not just as if i could talk it's like four in the morning five in the morning here <laughs> um it's not just ashes of creation but it's mmo there's categories for a lot of different games a lot of different genres um so it's just a gaming discord i know everyone has a discord um, so it's dime a dozen, but we're definitely, um, not strangers to having an awesome discord. So, uh, so nope. give us a join. Um, uh, I will quickly before we leave. And if you join, pop in when we're in chat and feel free to say hi and come join us for some sometimes crazy conversation. I think. <laughs> yeah.